Welcome back and good afternoon. World leaders, African heads of state and leaders of commerce and civil society have descended upon Durban for the World Economic Forum on Africa. The three-day summit is officially underway from today and the theme of the summit is achieving inclusive growth, responsive and responsible leadership. Aid and development charity Oxfam launched an inequality report on the eve of WEF Africa entitled Starting with People, a human economy approach to inclusive growth in Africa. Well, standing by is Gloria Sifako Musi, who is at WEF, and we cross live to her now. Over to you, Gloria. Good afternoon, Colin. Um, well, the World Economic Forum is in full swing. Well, actually, we've just come out of a, a session where lifting people out of poverty was discussed. And what was discussed was also the impact of climate change, um, agriculture uh, as a key that can lift people out of poverty. Um, we also had speakers talking about uh, entrepreneurship, how businesses, small businesses especially, can be supported to make sure that they create jobs and um, we've also heard about uh, that entrepreneurship is actually important in the sense that most African economies are more dependent on resources um, digging out resources out of the soil and then imp exporting them um, so diversification becomes very important which is why uh, we've seen most of the African economies um, hardly impacted uh, by the drop in commodity prices and um, well one of the speakers in that discussion was Winnie Bianima from Oxfam International. She joins me now. Good afternoon. And thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for having me. You expressed really strong feelings about privatizing education. Oh, yes, I did. The session, which was the first session of the World Economic Forum Africa, was looking at leadership in Africa and what leadership needs to do, focused on political leadership. And my view was that African leadership is failing us in especially young people. Young people are not being prepared for the future, being given the right education for the future. Instead, we are seeing governments withdrawing from the earlier commitment of giving universal primary and secondary education. Those two are so important to build upon other skills that can make them productive. But today we are seeing more moving towards privatization of education providing what is seen as low cost, but is also low quality primary and secondary education that will lead them nowhere. I was very critical of our leaders for failing the youth there, and then failing on jobs, failing to create jobs and no accountability for creating jobs. Our universities, we have some of the prestigious universities in the world in Africa, but are we producing the right skills to uplift our economies. You see, the issue of skills is not just an issue of the formal education system. Actually, we have to think that, we have to understand that the world is changing very fast. Eh? Technology is changing the nature of work. A lot of the work that is currently done is becoming automated. So we live in that reality where technology is bringing a lot of change. We need to look at skilling in a broader way. There's a need for formal education as a foundation, but there are lots of other ways of acquiring skills in the workplace, in vocational training, in different ways of skilling our young people for a future that is changing technologically. But our governments need to tackle this issue of technology and shepherd technology. Technology isn't neutral. It can come and take away even the few jobs that we have and just give profits to the tech companies unless governments use our deliberate in the policy and the investments to make the technology work for the majority. And another sector, agriculture, is there still interest in agriculture? Here is the biggest failure of Africa. Today we are talking of three famines, three famines happening in Africa, in Nigeria, in Somalia and in South Sudan. Two weeks ago I visited Northeast Nigeria, I visited South Sudan 
and I saw people di are dying. People are dying. I saw desperate women who are trapped in, in IDPs who can't even step out because they will be raped. And in all these regions, agriculture has died. There has been no investment there for years and years and years. And although the, the famine is driven by conflict, the underlying causes lie in the fact that these, these are countries where agriculture has not been invested in, people have no source of livelihood, climate change has come, there's more drought, more floods, and there's no support for ordinary people to adapt and earn good incomes from the land. So African governments need to invest where the people are. 50% and more of our people live on the land in agriculture, farming at a small scale. So investments in irrigation systems, in roads to lead to markets, in cr accessing credit for farmers, technology, information, agriculture extension, these are critical and our governments just pledge. They go to African Union and pledge that they are going to invest 15% of their budgets in agriculture. Today, only eight countries have made that commitment. The rest, just a piece of paper. We want to see them put money in agriculture. We know for a fact that an investment in agriculture can reduce poverty five times more than an investment in any other economic sector. So they've got to get on with it. So you're saying there's not enough support. Um, in terms of entrepreneurship, how easy is it for entrepreneurs in, in, in Africa to actually get ahead and actually create jobs? This is what we're talking about when we say invest in agriculture. The African farmer, the, Af the ordinary African person is an entrepreneur. But it is so sad that our governments, are when they talk about foreign direct investment, they are obsessed with bringing foreigners to invest. The word investor has become synonymous with the word foreigner. It, our ordinary people are not seen as investors, yet they are the primary investors, and they are the primary risk takers. A farmer on the, her piece of land is taking all the risk with the little support from the government, is producing, is being taxed, and taxed yet without support to make her farm productive, or insurance to make her safe when droughts come, when floods come, when even political shocks come. So there is an abandonment of people by our leadership, and this forum should focus on leadership that is accountable, that is responsive, and that's focused on poverty reduction, poverty eradication, and tackling inequality. These are the two barriers to growth, which they want, but they must focus on poverty, on inequality. These are really important issues that are being discussed here. Um, obviously, poverty reduction is one of them. But how, how do we make sure that from the World Economic Forum right here in Devon, we actually, these discussions are going to translate to actually action that we will see on the ground? This is a platform for networking, for sharing, for challenging each other. I come here to challenge governments, to challenge companies, to have the leadership that's values driven, that is doing justice to ordinary people. This is not a forum for decisions. No decisions are made here. But it is hoped that some leaders here will be inspired, will be challenged, will go back and do what is right. And of course, for us as Oxfam, we work with communities. We build momentum and pressure on the governments by working with communities and helping them to speak out, to demand and claim their rights. Ultimately, the leaders have to respond to the people who elected them, and it is the people who must rise and challenge them, especially young people, to get them to deliver to them. Thank you very much for your time. That's where we leave it. Well, we going back to you in Johannesburg. Um, that was Winnie Bianima um, from Oxfam. Well, she's calling on leadership uh, to show more commitment to eradicating the problems that Africa is facing.